practice diet, both a dietitian and a nutritionist here in Mount Kisco, and I've been practicing for close to 20 years, um, actually, right here in Mount Kisco. So, and I work with a lot of different conditions. You know, I do weight loss, but I also work with cancer patients. We work with digestive issues. Uh, we work with weight gain as well, and um, people with um, you know other autoimmune type conditions. Um, so there's many different types of areas that nutrition can really be extremely helpful with. But today what I'd like to focus on, so that's an area I think for a lot of people, a lot of interest, is really weight loss. And um, because we are such a large group and all of you have different individual needs, I'm going to really focus on how you as the individual can have a better understanding of how you need to have your own unique program. So that not everybody should be eating a vegetarian diet and not everybody should be a, a meat eater. Um, so what we're going to take a look at are what are the needs that we have if we're trying to lose weight and what are some of the causes of weight gain. Because there's so many different types of reasons why people have a hard time losing weight. It's not always just about eating too many calories, there's many other reasons as well too. So we're going to touch on those. And I'm happy to take questions as we go along if you find that's better for you so you don't forget to ask your question. Um, but the idea is for me to do a 40-minute lecture and then open it up for questions so we can finish on it. <coughs> and some of you, I know, are trying to get back to watch um, Obama for the 9 p.m. <laughs> you know, his, his talk on the, on the TV. So if we can do that, we will try and, you know, of course, we'll be done well before then. Okay, so I'd like to get started. Now, all of you should have a red folder. And the first thing, of course, are the, is the introduction, which I just went over. And then the other, the causes of weight gain, taking a look at some of the reasons why people have a hard time losing weight and why do they actually gain weight. So let's take a look at some of those reasons. Um, the first one, and this is not in any particular order, this just happened to come, you know, to mind as I was preparing now for the lecture. So don't feel that because we're starting with nutrient depletion that that's the most important. It's not necessarily. But it's really, but all of these are extremely important factors involved in weight gain. So just a simple nutrient depletion like being low in iron. Um, people who might be even slightly anemic will often have a much harder time losing weight. Um, because iron is very important for um, oxygen transport in the body. And in order to burn fat, you need to have oxygen present. You can't burn fat without oxygen. And that's one of the reasons, which we'll come to later on, why exercising is so critical to really have a uh, more successful weight loss. Um, so in addition to iron, um, we also have minerals like zinc, for instance, and selenium, which play a role in thyroid um, health. Okay, so sometimes you could have a sluggish thyroid and it may not show up on the blood work. You could be just slightly deficient um, in those minerals and that in itself would actually give you a much slower metabolism. And then vitamin D. How many of you here have had your vitamin D levels checked? Okay, so not even half the group. Okay, um, that is one vitamin. Is there a lot of noise in the back? Yeah, yeah sure. I'll take care of it. All right, thanks, Kat. <laughs> vitamin D. Okay, so many of you has, have not had your vitamin D levels checked. Vitamin D is one of the most important vitamins for fat metabolism. Okay, so it's something you definitely want to get tested. Um, and optimal, the range often on a lab test is anywhere from 30 to 100. So you don't want to be 30 or 35. The goal would be at least to be around 60, okay, on your vitamin D levels. And that would be optimal for helping with fat metabolism. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So making sure you're not anemic, making sure you're not deficient in any of those. And you can test for zinc, you can test for selenium. All those minerals actually can be shown up on, you know, through Quest or lab, any of the traditional lab testing. Okay, protein. Let's take a look at protein. How many of you start with a protein breakfast in the morning? Okay, a few of you do, not bad. That's, that's great. That's very good. So let's take a look at how do you figure out though how much protein you should be eating? Okay, um, because not all of us should be eating the same amount of protein. We all have different protein requirements. Um, the simplest way to figure out your protein intake is to have your weight, of course, into, uh, transferred into kilograms. So you divide the pounds by 2.2 to get it into kilograms. 
And then if you are doing very light exercise, you multiply by a factor of 0.8. Okay, if you are a moderate exerciser, you multiply it by a factor of one. Okay, and those of you who are triathletes or you really exercise a lot, you're looking at a factor of 1.2. Okay, and that'll give you your grams of protein that, you, that is required for you on a daily basis. So you can see that that's going to be different for each and one of you. Okay, because all of you are different body weights, so that's going to, and also your activity levels are different too. So, yeah. is everybody clear on that? For those making notes, we have a blank piece of paper at the back of the section on the right side. Oh, thanks. Okay, if you need to make any notes, we have a, just a plain sheet of paper right behind all the handouts, on the right-hand side of the folder. Okay, so that gives you your grams. Okay, okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to do the first one. So, 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 we're going to do the first one. Okay, divided by 2.2 to get kilograms. Okay, and if you are a light exerciser, you multiply it by 0.8. So if you either, you know, whether you exercise or if you're a light exerciser, light means like two times or less per week. Okay, and maybe 20 to 30 minutes each time. And is that for the day or for each minute? That's per day. Okay. Okay, how do you measure the grams? Okay, good question. How do you measure the grams? Well, just to give you um, I, uh, an example, one egg is eight grams of protein. One egg. So let's say a large egg is eight grams of protein. So if you're eating two eggs, that's 16 grams of protein right there. Okay, so that gives you an idea. Okay, very good question. If you are trying to lose weight, do you base the amount of protein on your weight now or the weight you would like to get down to? You, play, you base it on your lower weight. Okay, so you always base the amount of grams of protein on the lower weight. Okay. All right, so point eight was for light to very little <coughs> exercise. If you are a moderate exerciser, then you multiply by a factor of one. Okay. And then if you're a triathlete, it's 1.2. And then heavy bodybuilding is usually 1.5. Okay, so just to get, or really long distance uh, runners, you know, like marathon runners would be 1.5 because you really break down muscle very quickly. You do endurance type events. Okay, so you can see how the, you know, the protein intake is very different and unique to each one of you. But we need protein to help metabolism. We need protein to put on muscle mass uh, because in order to lose weight healthfully, you need to build muscle. Okay, so not only are you going to be building muscle through exercise, but you need to make sure you're getting enough protein to help build that muscle. Otherwise, you'll be breaking down your muscle and you won't be seeing results with the exercise. Okay, great. And then in terms of protein quality, um, you know, they've done lots of studies where they've looked at um, people consuming protein and what type of protein is really the best. Um, for some of you, whey protein powder, which is derived from milk, works really well. For others, a rice protein powder will work even better. Um, and those of you who are not sensitive to eggs or egg whites, <coughs> egg white protein powder is another good option. The advantage of doing a protein powder in the morning for breakfast is that the absorption is so much better because it's in a liquid form. So our bodies absorb things more efficiently when we take it in a liquid form. Okay, and the muscles of the body can utilize it more efficiently. So that's one of the reasons why we recommend uh, those of you who really would like to see results with weight loss is to do some form of a protein shake in the morning. 